that time of week again where we take a little look and see what you guys have been saying on this channel over the last few days. But before we start discussing our subscriber comments, let's take a little look and see what Lucas Paqueta said in an official statement released via his social media yesterday. Paqueta said, I am frustrated and upset to have read recent misleading and inaccurate press articles published in both England and Brazil claiming to disclose information about my case. Some of that information is entirely false and appears designed to undermine my position. I am also concerned that, although they are false and misleading, these articles are clearly sourced from an individual close to the case. The FA proceedings are supposed to be confidential and they are extremely serious for me and my family. The continued leaking and publication of inaccurate information to the press is now putting at risk my chance of receiving fair hearing. I have, therefore, instructed my lawyers to write to the FA to request that they conduct a thorough investigation into how information about the case, even if it inaccurate, is finding its way into the public domain. I continue to deny the charge against me and look forward to demonstrating my innocence. Now, there was one thing that stood out to me when reading this yesterday. There was one sentence in particular, which I feel is a little bit contradictory. And it's on the third line. It said, I am also concerned that although they are false and misleading, these articles are clearly sourced from an individual close to the case. And this is the one that stuck out for me because I find it a little bit contradictory. Because if they are inaccurate and misleading, now he doesn't go as far as saying they're completely made up. So it feels like maybe the truth is being bent a little bit in that regard. But if it is inaccurate... Is it someone close to the case then? Because if it's someone close to the case, surely the information would then be accurate. It would be what is going on. Only two sets of people know the complete truth in regards to what's going on with this case. Lucas Pesquetta and his team, the FA and their team. They're the only two sets. Now, there's a lot of people in the middle, including ourselves, including news. And we can only pick up what we get given by the media. One thing's for sure, which we agree with Paquetta about, is that there is a lot of leaks. There has been a lot of information put out there. Now, we don't know how true that is. It's just speculation. But it's coming from someone and it's coming from somewhere. And journalists, surely, not all of them, but surely some of them and most of them, you'd like to think have a large degree of integrity. I appreciate you're going to be laughing at that as well. I think I'm probably not really. But those journalists with good standing within the game because I don't think right, making up a fake transfer rumour does not really count as journalism but when you're reporting on something as serious as this you like to think there's a lot of background checks and information checks before they publish this story because it is incredibly damaging even if it's accurate but especially if it is inaccurate there is a lot of leaks because we know a lot of well, We've been told a lot of things, if you believe it or not, it's up to you. But we have been told a lot. We've been told when the hearing's supposed to be, who's involved in the hearing, the charges against Paquetta, the fact that he supposedly got rid of his phone, the, the type of bets that's been made, the people involved, which has been confirmed by those people. His Uncle Bruno, Uncle Bruno, he's spoken. He himself has given a statement regarding the allegations that he made payments to the real Betis player. He just confirmed that he did. It's just that he claims it was through paying back a loan. So there is some factual information out there, unless Uncle Bruno's lying. But how true is it? We don't know. But one thing I do agree with Paquetta is there's a lot of leaks in this in this case. Right, then, moving on to our subscribers. Somebody in the last video said, I can't really read the comments. I was just screenshotting the comments and bringing them up. And someone said, I can't read it. It's too small. So... I understand why people visually impaired might be disgruntled with my choice in the last video. As somebody who has a hearing impairment, I appreciate it. If I put on a, a TV program, ain't got any subtitles, I ain't happy about it, right? I get it. So, look, I've got a little bit creative. Look at this. Charlie would be proud of me. Bill Clark says this. There is far too much speculation, unknown and presumed content around Paquetta's predicament. Certain people are releasing little snippets, true or false, until the actual hearing and facts are presented for the panel to adjudicate. It's all guesswork. The only thing for certain is Paquetta's performances have been affected by this, but we need to compare his performances between international and club to know if it's truly affecting him or he's just taking the money. The thing is, what I will say is the people that made comments in regards to Paquetta in this video, because there's a couple more to come as well, 
they made them before Lucas Paqueta. So Bill made that comment before Lucas Paqueta's statement. I must add context and be fair here. Um, I completely agree with what Bill said. And I, listen, I'm not stupid. I'm aware that we contribute to it because we create content around it. But I do think there's a massive difference... You may disagree, but I do think there's a massive difference between somebody leaking the information and somebody discussing the information. I think I feel this is natural when you discuss stuff that's been put out there in the media. I think it's a very natural and normal thing to do. And that's what I try and stress a lot in here when people say, oh, this isn't news. This is not a news channel. This has never been a news channel. It's a fan channel. We discuss what fans are talking about. A lot of my content can sometimes be inspired by if you like by what my friends are discussing with me or in group chats that i'm in they'll be discussing a certain topic around west ham i think well i'm going to discuss that because that's what west ham fans are discussing hopefully that makes sense mackie bricks not related we, we're not related i, I don't think and mackie bricks says would drop caduce he was in pieces after they got knocked out of the african nations a year ago now now they haven't qualified his performances are bound to take a massive nosedive. He'll be a mess. The one thing I will add, that's slightly incorrect, and I appreciate, I know why you think they're knocked out of the qualifiers for the African Cup of Nations. I know why. It's been put out there that Ghana cannot qualify. That's wrong. They can. Now, Kudus was given the captain's armband over the, the last couple of games. He got beat by Sudan in the latest game. To qualify for the African Cup of Nations next year, Ghana need to win both of their games and hope that Sudan don't pick up a point. So it's unlikely they'll qualify, but they're not knocked out just yet. But I do agree that after the African Cup of Nations last year, Caduce struggled a little bit because he was gutted. They went out of the group stage. They have done the last two tournaments now. And he put up a big statement. I'm not going to read that one out, don't worry. He put up a big statement regarding just his disappointment and the team's disappointment of their recent performances. But... They're not out just yet. Uh, Kanki says the Ipswich game was a nothing game and we learnt nothing from it. If we had lost, then there would have been something to write home about. Saturday's game will go a long way where we are so far. A close defeat, still nothing bad. The Man U game will tell us more about direction. Lopetegui is taking us so far. Come on, you irons. Dean Allen says Lopetegui needs to take Paqueta to one side, put an arm around him and tell him he needs to give him a break for a couple of weeks to get his head together. Soller can take his place. Paqueta's a bit of a liability at the moment and is not playing at all well. So him being on the pitch is detrimental to the team as a whole. Next up, we've got one from Gonzo. It says, do you have a recommendation for a VPN? And what are your two favorite features of your recommended VPN? Well, Gonzo, yes, I do. It's Surfshark VPN. And two of my favorite features, I would say, number one is that you can change your geolocation. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you want to access your usual content, you just set your location to where you are from. So if I was to go to Spain and I want to access Sky Sports YouTube channel back here in the UK, I would just change my location to the UK and I could watch Sky Sports YouTube channel just as I normally would. So that's one of my favourite features. And the second one is probably the fact that I only need one account to cover many devices. So I sign up once, I cover my computer, I cover my phone, I cover my iPad, I log into all the devices with one login, one purchase, one payment. Thank you very much, Gonzo. Surfshark VPN is what I recommend. Gonzo has another question. Is there a special offer at Surfshark from Hammers Chat? What is it and how can I get it? Funny you say that, Gonzo, there is. You can get four months free now how you get it has slightly changed you have to go to surfshark.com forward slash hammers chat no additional words no spaces the link is in the description below in the pinned comments just go underneath this video into the comment section top comment by hammers chat the link is in there surfshark.com forward slash hammers chat and you will get four months free just for signing up by using our link by using the the url i'm telling you but also there's a bit of a bonus They've got a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you give it a bit of a try, you don't like it after three weeks, simply go online and you can cancel your account and get a full refund. No questions asked. You don't have to ring anybody up. You don't have to speak to anybody. It's very simple to get your refund. 30-day money-back guarantee. Thank you for your questions, Gonzo. Mike said, could the answer to our striker issue be under our nose? 
someone that likes to create havoc in the box, can feed off scraps, good at set pieces and can draw players out almost Antonio Mark II. So check. What are your thoughts on this? Well, Mike, it's a big no for me. A huge no. Um, I think a large part of Suchek's positive contribution to a game is defensively. I, don't get me wrong, I think offensively is good at that part as well. But I do think protecting the back four, him being in the our own 18-yarder for crosses, and I, I appreciate set pieces you can bring him back anyway. But when we are defending on our box, I think Suchek is a really good asset to have, and I think that's a big part of his game. And you'd be removing that. In regards to can he play striker, I've got no evidence of it. I think it's a, it's 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 just a big no for me, Mike. I, I kind of get where you're coming from, and it's creative. And if it worked, it would be genius. But I'm not sure. It's a, uh, I say I'm not sure. It's it's a big no for me, Mike. And uh, Wash Dion says uh, Spurs are beatable, but I don't trust Lopetegui right now. Really, please can we play Caduceus Central? Basement says, definitely a chance to see where we are and if Lopetegui can address some of the glaring issues at the back. Because if he doesn't, we will get torn to shreds, expecting lots of goals either way. Adam says, I cannot fathom how Paqueta has worked his whole life to play at the highest level, earn money beyond his wildest dreams, only to throw it all away for a few extra dollars for friends and family if he's guilty. There are millions who would give anything to be in his position and he wastes that privilege and tosses away the ultimate job and lifestyle. That's not Adam saying he thinks he's done it. That's just Adam saying, why would you do it when you've worked so hard to get this? Richard said, I don't think it would be surprising if Lewis offered sort of pathway into the first team football at West Ham. Not this season, perhaps, but looking forward the ages of many of our central midfielders suggest that he might not have that long to wait. I hope so. Um, I, I really do. He's, he's captained England under 19s again since the, the first one. So he's he's having a good time at the minute, Lewis Orford. I don't think we'll see him in the first team this season. And that's not that's not a problem. He's young. He's younger than the likes of Callum Marshall. So he's got time on his side. Much younger than... I say much younger. A couple of years younger than Freddie Potts. So he does have time and that that's not the end of the world I, i'd still like to see him get loaned out either january onwards or the whole of next season and go get first team football in a more competitive and a more physically demanding league as well but he certainly looks like a talent hvny says not going to let spurs have this one 3-0 or 3-1 West Ham. No regrets with this comment. Even if we take a hiding, I'm standing on it. Come on, you irons. We can beat the Spurs. Richard, I've got that comment twice. Apologies, a bit of an error. I must have liked this comment a lot. There, Richard, there you go. You got a bonus one there, didn't you? Um, Tim, so I'd like to see you and Gonzo discuss his opinion that Moy's ball is the best option for the Tottenham game. Not just to get the three points, but grabbing a win at the Bagel Drome. I heard it called that Bagel Drome. Usually gets them imploding and fighting amongst themselves, which is lovely to see. I think a high line is asking for trouble. He detested David Moyes, but in this game, he always got the tactics spot on. See, that's just it, isn't it? I think for all you know, the criticisms of all managers, not just Moyes, but all managers, they, their tactics usually work in some games, don't they? That you could argue Pep's work every game. But if you were to take Pep's tactics and apply them to Ipswich Town's team, they're not going to win the league, are they? They're, they're, they're going to struggle in a lot of games because the ability of player isn't up to what Pep wants them to do. So whilst Moyes was disappointing in some games for these tactics. There were other games where actually they were good. They were the right ones to use. My issue was that sometimes I feel like we'd approach Man City away and Burnley at home in the same nature. And that was an issue I had because we're not good enough to do what Pep does, which is play the same way every week or roughly the same way every week and yield success. But likewise, we're not as bad as Ipswich where... 
you play the same way every week, you're going to get beat every week. We're, we're somewhere in the middle where there will be games we can play our way and do well, but there's other games where we're going to have to adapt a little bit and we're going to have to maybe concede possession a little bit more than we'd want to because the team we're playing are better than us. And I want to... when. I don't want to see a one-glove fits all from Lopetegui or whoever the manager is. I don't like it. Now, saying that, I'm going to be a bit hypocritical here. I would have loved Postacoglu 15 months ago to come to West Ham, and he's a manager that does one-glove fits all. He just, regardless of who he's playing, the circumstances, keeps on doing it. Like I said, go back to when Spurs played Chelsea and they were down to nine men. They continued doing the same thing, and there's an image. I think Chelsea have a free kick about halfway in their half, there's an image of all the Spurs, literally pretty much all of the eight outfielders, stood along the halfway line. And all the Chelsea players are in between the Spurs players, facing the Spurs goal. And everyone knows what's the way happened. They're just way to boot the ball over the defence, and it's just a race. And it kept working for Chelsea, and yeah, Nicholas Jackson got a hat-trick, I think, and it was he didn't even get man a match. Um, but my point was... Even even though it was suicide, Postacoglu continued to do what he was doing. And I would have liked Postacoglu, but with Lopetegui, sorry, with Lopetegui, I want to see him mix it up a little bit and adapt. And I think Spurs away is one of those games where Moy's ball would, did work. I said in the preview, Gonzo, when we played Man City, Liverpool, I didn't really feel like we had a chance for David Moyes. None. It was a bit quite flaggish. But I ain't having that with Spurs. When it came to Spurs and Man United at the London Stadium, our next two fixtures, I felt, with David Moyes, I felt like we were going to win those games. Genuinely, honestly, you can go back and look, look at the previews from years gone by. I'm pretty certain I'll be predicting wins in these games. And I predicted a win for tomorrow against Spurs. A little bit naive, because we no longer got Moyes. But if Moyes was here, I'd feel confident... So, you know, no, actually, I'm going to stick with that. If Moyes was manager for tomorrow, I feel confident we were going to win. I, I would, because I felt against Spurs and Man United at the London Stadium, his tactics worked. Doesn't mean it'll work. Nottingham Forest away or Everton at home coming up, but doesn't mean they would work for those games, but just the next two fixtures, I, th I think they did well. Um, so I'm going to agree with him, actually. And sorry, Gonzo's not here to discuss it with him. But um, between me and you, Tim, I agree with you. I think these tactics would work tomorrow. Anyway, that's what our subscribers have been saying over the last few days on this channel. A bit of a difficult one because it's international break, so there's not much topics to discuss. Uh, but the winner, number 10... Myself and Gonzo did a video during international break. It was suggested by Bradley. He said, hey, can we get your top 10 influential signings in the last 10 years? And we couldn't decide on number 10. We were having a little bit of a debate between Zuma, Dawson and Paqueta. And looking through the comments, there was a runaway winner, which was Craig Dawson. So congratulations, Craig Dawson. You became the 10th signing, 10th most influential signing. We got a little bit of stick for having Jesse Lingard in there. I couldn't understand it. People said it's a joke having Lingard. I don't know. Nine goals and four assists in 16 games. It's pretty influential, if you ask me. And um, yes, it was a positive, influential one because people were saying, where's Roberto? Quite right. And that's fair. Roberto should be number one. He was incredibly influential, but we kept it positive. But anyway, thank you for your comments over the last week, whether you featured in this video or not. Much appreciated. I'm looking forward to catching up with you all in the comments of this video. And then tomorrow, if you would like to send us your fan cam tomorrow after the game, please do. There's a link in the description below with all the details. Basically, just record it straight after full time or very close to full time. Get your phone out. Landscape mode. That's important. Landscape mode. Record your thoughts. Blah, 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 blah. This guy did well. This guy was rubbish. Blah, 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 blah. And send it to us via we transfer to hammerschatpatron at gmail.com. We'll pop it up on one of our two YouTube channels. And eventually, once you've sent in so many videos, you can get rewarded the top prize the top reward is a signed shirt of your choice so we've got the canyon ones we've got Cadiz, we've got paqueta we've got jared bowen we've got julian dix we've got sir trevor brookin signed shirts coming in as well nearly every current or ex player we can get our hands on um now you do have to send us a lot of videos 
but it costs us a lot of money for these shirts, so I think it's fair. Anyway, sorry, I'm gonna shut up and disappear. If you've enjoyed this video, please do drop a like on it by clicking thumbs up, subscribing to Hammer's Chat. I'll catch you in a bit. <laughs>